Hey guys, this is Technos 3D Designs here and today this is the first video on the channel and today I'm gonna teach you guys how to make a Canon camera Canon camera 3D design a Canon camera. I've got these nice little features like uh, you can rotate this lens and you can uh, pop it off because there's like a magnet drilled in it. I drilled a hole in this and I put a magnet and I stuck a magnet on the other end and um you can uh, re hinge this view screen just like in a normal camera, which is kind of cool actually. It's just, it's pretty basic. It's just a socket system. And um, it looks pretty cool, right? And um, you're probably wondering, how is it possible to build something like this if you're a total beginner? And the answer to that is yes, you can. You can build something like this if you're a total beginner, definitely. If you have enough creativity, motivation, and time and energy to put into this well yeah definitely you could build it I mean look at my own story for example I mean I just started out recently back then I didn't even know how to operate a 3d printer and now look at this look at this a few months later I can build this a few months later I've built this and now I'm doing a YouTube video on it it's pretty cool right you could probably de you could probably most definitely get to this level if you try hard enough and if you want to motivation and um, you could probably build more complicated stuff than this too. So you know what, without any further ado, let's keep on going and ignore this nice little back slideshow of my 3D models that I've created so far and you know what, let's start at the beginning. This is a non-printable version of the Canon camera that I built. See, look at this. You can't print it for many important reasons. See, look at that. There is a gap between the lens and the ground. It's an obvious at first, but there is a big gap between the lens and the ground. Like that. If you tried to print it like that, you'd be a big blob of messed up filament. You can't do that. It'd be a huge waste of filament time and energy. So you would have to print it separately in order to make it print properly. And also, there are some parts that have to be printed separately, like this socket, like this view screen has to be printed separately. This view screen has to be printed separately so that it can um, move independently. And um, this, if you want this lens to be removable, just like in the real model of the camera, you have to print it separately. Right? So I'm going to go into details on how I split this. So I split this into six parts over here. That's the lens. That's the lens over here. This is the viewfinder. This is the handle of the camera where you grip the camera like that. It's the flash button. A tiny little button over here. There's the view screen, which I mentioned earlier. This thing. And here is the body of the camera, last but not least the body of the camera, the main part of the camera, what everything else is based off of. And now I'm just going to go into a little bit of detail on how I made each of these parts, it won't be long, just, just stay with me for a while. And um, here, here is the Tinkercad plate, the build plate where I built the camera originally. You might notice there are two of them. Um, that's kind of weird also because I uh, I started I built them on a couple of them actually um, so yeah you know what let's start at the lens lens is pretty easy to build it's honestly just a couple of cylinders stacked on top of each other uh, like one cylinder over here another one over here there's another one over here and uh, this what looks like a distorted cylinder in the middle there the one with the radius and the smaller radius at the top. That's really just a cone with the top cut off of it. See, look, in the purple, it's actually just a cone with the top cut off of it. I mean, I'm aware that I didn't have to make it so big. I did, I'm aware that I didn't have to make it so big, but then again, that's what I did, so I can't change it now. And you're probably wondering how I got that indent in the middle. You probably, those of you who are good at this kind of stuff, you probably already know how. And if you don't already, here's how I did it. I just took a cylinder, turned it into a cutout, like a hole, H, control H, changed it to a hole. 
and then I fused it. I fused it with the main camera. Like boom, it's a cookie cutter almost. You know what? Uh, let's move on to the handle now. This is the handle of the camera right over here. Pretty simple, just take what it calls a box, fuse it with a round roof, take a round roof hole cut out like I mentioned, and then to add that icing on top of the cake is the cylinder, what looks like a button. It's a button of some kind, and you'll fuse them all together and you would get this. Boom. You get this. Nice, right? There. And let's move on to the view screen. The view screen you can't really drag out. I can't really drag this out because it's hidden behind a whole bunch of cutouts and if I tried to it would mess up the whole shape. And it's all ungrouped too. I I wouldn't have be able, I would distort the shape. But what I can do is I can go to the parts collection. I can go to the parts collection and I can find it over here. I save the part and uh, you can see that it's pretty simple really. It's pretty simple to make this. All you gotta do is take a box, uh, make it to your own dimensions like that. Just take a socket or two. Take two sockets in the connector section rotate them yeah you know that's how you'd make it pretty simple and over here you can see how they connect to each other you have to print them out separately but it's too bad that's too bad let's go back and let, let's go back to the body of the camera the body of the camera the third uh, fourth part it's the hardest of the parts to build, but it's still relatively simple. It's really just a box with a bunch of buttons on top of them. A bunch of buttons attached, which would be just cylinders with different dimensions attached to each other. Like, I don't know, like 15, 20 buttons. Oh, and this button got a little uh, rectangular prism thingy too. Uh, buttons over here too. And um, you probably noticed that, if you look very closely, you probably noticed that this side is not a complete corner. This is actually curved. How I did that was basically I took this round roof cutout, chopped off the corner, and added a round roof where this rotated round roof and added it where that missing corner was. Looking really closely, you can see a curved line there. That is where I got the curved edge. And also, you can see over here. I just chopped off a couple of the, I chopped off the end there to get a button. It's pretty neat actually. You end up something like this. Boom! There you go. There you go. There you go. Looks almost like the real life version. And now, second to last part is the viewfinder. Pretty simple. Just take a wedge, smash it on top of a box, put it on top of a box, and then here's the editable text. Oh, the text isn't editable, but yeah. Anyway, the text is editable. Uh, that's the Canon logo, or what looks like the Canon logo. I can't have the real one because that then I'd have to pay a whole bunch of royalty fees. Uh, and there's a whole bunch of shapes here. I c I won't really go into detail because it's kind of complicated how I made this. But the point is, it would end up something like this. It would end up something like that. See look, like the polygon, I cut it out and then there is a frame, there is a cylinder in there and see how part of it was uh, cut off with this thing, right? And now last but not least we are going to head over to the flash button. Pretty simple, anyone could do it, it's just a box, it's literally just a box with dimensions that you add yourself 10 cent 10 millimeters by 9 millimeters by 6 millimeters pretty simple pretty simple and yeah that's pretty much it on this part of the video and uh, what I really wanted to do before the end was I wanted to show you some footage of the 
each part being printed with a 3D printer, but unfortunately I cannot do that because I did not have any footage. I did not take any camera footage of the 3D pr parts being printed. But what I can do is I still have the Cura files. So I can show you how it's a simulation of how it gets printed on Cura. Like see look, I won't show you each and every part. You can do this yourself if you go to the links in the description. But using these sliders, you can simulate each and every individual layer. Isn't that cool? Each and every layer. How the printer print moves up, how the print grows over time. And if you look really closely, you can see a gray thing moving. That's the printer nozzle. Like go to the very last thing. And that's the printer nozzle moving very, very fast. You can do a whole bunch of other cool things with Cura, but this is one of the coolest by far, actually. Um, you can do this with any Cura model, G-code file or uh, SDL file, doesn't really matter. Point is, you need this kind of software to print, turn SDL files into printable files. And yeah, that's, that's pretty cool. So if you want to go ahead and check this out, go click on the links in the description and find it out. And if you, this is pretty much it for the video. So if you like this content, hit that like button and go subscribe to my channel for more content that'll be coming soon. And remember, guys, it's not. If you want, guys, want to make stuff like this and you were inspired by the video, please let me know in the comments. I'll, I'll definitely be, I'll definitely be around to support. And um, if you have any, uh, you need any help, you can always ask me in the comments section. So yeah, that's pretty much it for the video. Stay safe, guys, and see you in the next video.